Welcome to our online worship service for today, Sunday, September 6th, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Our COVID task force is working diligently to try to get us safely back in the building. But in the meantime, we have a number of ways in which we as a congregation can gather and engage. One of those ways is our worship service that comes to you online by YouTube or Facebook. We invite you to share these links with all those who need God's love and God's ministry in their life. We also have our Zoom congregational calls that happen every Sunday at 10 a.m. If you need a link for those, please look for an email from the church office or go to our webpage and find a link there. We have some events coming up that we can engage with you. One that has been ongoing, and that is our every member visits. Pastor Ben and myself have so enjoyed these. If you have not scheduled a visit, please call the church office and Joanne will get you a visit scheduled. The other one that is happening is next Sunday. Sunday, September 13th is Rally Sunday. For this, there are two events happening. The first one, happens at our Zoom congregational coffee hour at 10 a.m. Reverend Emily Carson will join us from the Synod office to do my installation into our Savior's Church. So I would love to see your face on that Zoom congregational coffee hour. Following that, from noon to two, we will have a drive through celebration. And at that drive through celebration, we will have places for you to donate things for Lutheran World Relief. And we will have a number of stations that you can pick up things. Things like treats and things like a packet of stuff for families that Carol has put together for all of our, our young families. And Pastor Ben and myself will be there to greet you while you drive by. Please wave to us and we will shout words of greeting to each other. I hope to see you there. Another great celebration that happened in our body of Christ, our Savior's Lutheran Church, is we welcomed a new member, Noelle Christensen. Pastor Ben did her baptism yesterday, September 5th. So please welcome her and her family. Pray for them and celebrate this great event. We can celebrate it by remembering our own baptism. So join with me as we mark our foreheads, remembering that we are a child of God and God loves us. Now for our sermon moment today, Pastor Ben joined Christian Lechband for a conversation on the reconciliation in the community of faith found in our Gospel of Matthew. I have so enjoyed these conversations, so I can't wait to hear what Christian and Ben had to say. The other people helping us with our worship this morning include the Bonus family, the Rackney family, the director of music Ruth Benning, other musicians Jan Matson, Alicia Moline, and Jenny Lovin. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship now. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and river, bluff and valley. Amen. 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 In the light of this new day, let us confess our sin. We confess that we hurt other people with what we say and what we do. Loving God, forgive us. Loving God, forgive us. We confess that we do not take care of our communities or our world as you have called us to do. Loving God, forgive us. Loving God, forgive us. We confess that we participate in the brokenness around us, sometimes without even realizing it. Loving God, forgive us. Loving God, forgive us. <laughs>
If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your fear and shame are taken away, and you are made new. Live in the dawn of this new life. Let us join in the greeting with all of us saying the words and doing the hand and arm actions together. We begin with our arms and hands lifted up. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Welcome to our sermon moment for today. I'm glad to be joined by Christian Leckband, who will be discussing our story today from the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, thanks for joining me, Christian. Thanks for having me. Yeah. 
Uh, so what did you notice about this story? Uh, I noticed a few things. Uh, was is, uh, in verse 17 is, is if they refuse you, if they refuse to acknowledge any fault of their own and you bring them before the church and you explain what's going on. So you brought them before the entire congregation and essentially you've had a trial or by proxy essentially. And they're still not admitting that they did anything wrong. Get them out, remove them from your life. They get to disappear from the church community. And that was a, it's kind of an abrupt thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's interesting is, so, and I entirely agree with Matthew is, is that if you have someone that's not going to admit uh, any fault that they've caused towards you, then you obviously need to either reevaluate your relationship with the individual, whether it's a friend, coworker, romantic partner, and uh, get them out of your life for lack of a better term, because they're not healthy for you. Uh, that yeah. also reminds me, uh, sorry, what? I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, we're, I just wanna take a look at that quick, the, the exact wording he says, um, and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Now, where do Gentiles and tax collectors show up in Matthew's story in other ways and places? Not in any good way. <laughs> well, may, maybe not necessarily in ways that are, are lifted up, but they are the ones that Jesus seeks after, right? Yep. They're the ones that like, Jesus uh, seeks after, and he tries to help them. And if I'm remembering correctly, Matthew was a tax collector. Was that Mark? Uh, Matthew, the disciple, was a tax collector. Yep. And Jesus kind of sought him out and asked him to follow him, and people were kind of uproared about that. And, uh, Jesus definitely exhibits a, a strong moral character, like a strong just character in general, one to get him to, yeah, leave your job, quit it, come follow me, like listen to me talk and preach and spread the good word. And uh, I kind of, like I said previously, is, is that my interpretation was pretty cut and dry of get them out of your life because they're toxic and uh, that's the way that I guess it's worked for, or I've been able to manage it or manage poor relationships well is to just remove them if I can't get it to work. But there is something to be said about the route that Jesus takes in that regard of uh, trying your best to reach the individual and to help them and to generally just try to improve their lives, not to, you never want to shame the person into, uh, uh, a half existence and Jesus I never really does that he he really brings people up and I uh, points out their faults but not in a way that's malicious in any nature but mm -hmm. yeah so it, so this is it's a little more it's a little more complex than we often give it at first read so I mean you're right on on the one hand like if you're if you are treating a member of the church like a Gentile and a tax collector, they are not part of the church anymore. I mean, that's, that's just sort of cut and dry. That's, that's kind of what that's, what that means. But it also means that they are now, um, they've moved into the new realm of, of not like necessarily they are, they're gone for good and you should just kick them to the curb, but they are in the category now of people that we minister to who are not members of the church. So it's a, it's, it's a both and here that is, yep, they aren't part of the inner circle anymore. However, they are the people that the inner circle ministers to in the hopes that they will come to a, a point of reconciliation. And there's a, yeah, there, there's a lot of hope in that too, which is also a pretty prevalent theme that I found reading, uh, Matthew's works is, is a general hope for the future and a hope that to reconcile differences and issues 
between people in a positive and constructive manner that I would argue is a little, like even today we struggle with doing that and uh, working with each other. I mean, goodness knows I've, lots of people have struggled. Uh, I'm wondering the Gentile and the tax collector bit. That's a very, those are very specific terms and he didn't really, Matthew was very specific about those two. And I was wondering if he's ever talking about himself in this regard. Um, well, what we, what we kind of can piece together about Matthew um, from what we see from just the other gospel is that we're pretty sure that Matthew was a leader of a Christian community. And it was a Christian community that was probably under um, outside pressure from various groups. Um, most likely it was, um, his com Matthew's community was, was probably Jewish in origin. They probably were not Gentile in origin. Um, and so they were probably under pressure from other Jewish groups who didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Um, they're just, they're clues that we get as we read through, through the story um, and just sort of how Matthew puts things. Um, so, so maybe, I mean, there could be some of that here, but I'm wondering if maybe more of the, the category here was sort of a, it was kind of a catch-all. So Gentiles would be anybody who isn't Jewish. So especially for, for very observant Jews, um, that would have meant they are definitely outsiders. Mm -hmm. Tax collectors were an interesting group of people because they were Jews who were working with the Roman Empire. They were the ones who collected the Jewish people's taxes and then gave that to Rome. And Rome yeah. had this um, wonderful system for them that said, hey, you guys can collect the taxes so that we don't have to put ourselves in danger. Like you, you're Jews. And so you can go to other Jews and collect taxes from them. And you can charge whatever you want, just as long as we get our cut. So, so the tax collectors were often looked at as collaborators with the, with the Romans who were occupying. So they were, they were, you know, traitors to their own people. Plus they often fleeced their own people to line their own pockets. Um, so Jesus says, this person is like either a Gentile who's a total outsider or like one of these collaborators that none of us like, except that I have brought them in. Like I have gone and done ministry to them. And one of them is actually my disciple. So, <laughs> so you get to work with it now. Exactly. And, and that's a, a very, uh, interesting thought process in uh in jesus's teachings is, is that he always is bringing in uh what would be termed as outcasts or degenerates of society of the time uh you know mary matthew there's a couple dozen others that are escaping my mind um well, I mean, Jesus even preaches about the Samaritan and the Good Samaritan story, which we don't need to get into because that's an entirely different can of worms. <laughs> but there's a lot of... Matthew in this story and along with Jesus' teachings is trying to... Matthew, in his own way of what Jesus was doing, is trying to break down the walls that are between us in terms of our arguments over different philosophies or views and trying to meld uh, each other together for the betterment of ourselves and our community. Uh, and there's certainly lots going on today that um, pokes and prods at that and tries to break us apart. Um, we have uh, the continuing struggle against racism and, and different ideas around that, um, different, different understandings of what's going on. We have uh, political um, disagreements. There's, you know, kind of, kind of a big thing happening in a few months with the election. I mean, that's certainly uh, causing tension among us. Um, 
COVID-19. Yeah. I mean, there are different ideas. People have different, different thoughts and understandings about how to, how to deal with it and what's going on. So uh, there's a lot right now that is um, threatening and, and trying to, to draw us apart and divide us. And um, yeah, maybe this is a pretty timely uh, story for us to read. That it is. And it's, and another thing is with all those things is that we need to, we need to have the conversation about these things and what, what do we know it is? What's the information saying? What's the data saying? Again, sorry, I'm very logical. Got the engineer brain on, <laughs> but we need to have these uh, conversations and we need to have an open dialogue that isn't resulting in, uh, uh, in us going after each other uh, in terms of a non it, well, attacking each other's character and not really getting anywhere. Uh, we need to definitely be working less on winning the argument and more about uh, getting to the problem or at least solving the problem. Because our, uh, we're not arguing against each other, we're arguing against the problem. And I feel like what you said is that we've got a lot of different differences and we've uh, gotten very caught up in arguing amongst ourselves and pointing fingers at each other and we haven't really pointed uh, at the problem and said this is the problem that we need to uh, solve. Well I Christian I have I have really enjoyed our conversation today we have sort of ranged all over. Um, we have. we have uh the uh before we end this um christian would you please do the honors of closing us out today yes thanks be to god nailed it
As you bring Noel to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people. Bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that Noel may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Noel grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, please respond, I do. I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Noel in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help Noel live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please respond, I do. I, I do. do. People of God, do you promise to support Noel and pray for her in her new life in Christ? We do. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, now I'm going to sanitize my hands, and you can kind of bring her over. Okay. All right, Noel, now is the time. I'm going to put some water on your head, okay? I'm going to do three like times. Yep, just like swimming. Okay, so lean her over the bowl. Noel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Bunny went in too, that's all right. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your children new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Noel with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. All right, Noel, now I'm going to make a, get some more water on my finger, and I'm going to put a little cross on your forehead, just like that. You have been sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Okay, Noel, now we're going to light this candle over here. You want to come over and watch? I'm going to light a candle. Noel, receive this burning candle. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. And that's it. We're all done. You're baptized. Even in this time of physical separation, we are united with the whole church across time and space. Let us join with the church in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. now invite you to spend time sharing a low and a high from the past week. We also encourage you, 
as you desire and feel comfortable to post your lows and or your highs as comments. Please take a few minutes now to share. As we move into the prayers of our church, I want you to take with you the lows and the highs you shared earlier, and there will be a space for you to name them. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. 
guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, floods, storms, or pollution. Today we especially pray for those who are suffering due to the recent hurricane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths towards peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors, guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police towards laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. Today we especially pray for Mark, Maxine, Amy, Wayne, Larry, James, Melissa, Chris, Jeanette, Bonnie, Marcia, the family of Amy and Russ, Mark and Jean, and all those we name in our hearts now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring before you the highs in our lives, those things that are going well, reasons to rejoice, things we are proud of, things that we are looking forward to. We also bring our lows, those things that aren't going well, the things we are ashamed of, the things that we fear, the situations and events that make us sad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are grateful for the overflowing generosity of all who participate in our congregation's ministry. Your continued financial support, prayers, and acts of service enable us to share Christ's love and form faith from birth to senior saints. We invite you to continue living into the faith practice of giving to the ministry that God has called us to. You may give online through our website by participating in the automated Simply Giving program or by mailing your gift to the church office. Again, thank you for your continued generosity and for the love of Christ that you share with the world. We need that love now more than ever. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Nourish us through your gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love and show empathy to all who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We now get ready to share the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Jesus that he gives to us in the bread and wine. But before we can share this meal, we need to set the table. So make a sacred space and gather up your elements of bread and wine or grape juice as we sing.
Now that the table is set, we need to hear the story of this holy meal of communion and promise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Before we can eat and drink the Lord's Supper, like we do for all of our meals, we first need to pray. So, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to share this meal using the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbor with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service today, we remember that Jesus gathers us in worship in order to send us out into the world to share God's love. We are sent out as baptized children of God. And to help us remember this, I invite you to dip a finger in some water if you have some nearby and mark yourself or someone else's forehead with a cross saying, remember, you are God's child and God loves you. Here again, this promise from St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>
The peace of Christ is with you always. And also with you. May this week be filled with Christ's love, Christ's justice, and Christ's healing. Thanks be Thanks to God. God. Thank you for joining us for worship. Have a great week. Thank you.